What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Power Play with CJ. Today we're going to focus in on the Philadelphia Flyers' early struggles, being uh, one and seven through eight games, and the I, some posted comment about the Claude Giroux uh, trade rumors, and there's some on Twitter about it too. Um, first of all, we're struggling, so let's trade away our franchise center, our best player, the guy we've invested a lot of money into. Um, what is this, the Boston Bruins, 2005, with Joe Thornton, and you know, before I said CJ, you know, that ended up working out for the best. Yeah, they they kind of got fleeced in the trade, but you know, they won a cup. What six years later? I mean, so I, that's it's ludicrous. We can think about trading Drew right now because he's not the reason for your the struggles. It's not the goaltender's reason for the struggles either. Mason's like got a two thirty seven goals against and a nine twenty something save percentage, so he's been all right. Emery hasn't been that bad, but you also know what you're getting with Emery. And um, you know, I think the big thing is the, the defense. It's subpar. Um, you know, team and it's on the wrong side of thirty five. Uh, Coburn is what he is, and the rest of the guys, you know, Shen well, is what he is. You knew what you were getting when you traded JVR for him. And, uh, you know, I just think had they uh, addressed the blue line this off season instead of signing Vinny Le Cavalier to a gargantuan contract, you know, what he's worth versus what he got, um, you know, I just I didn't like the Le Cavalier contract really for anyone. I didn't like it for the Flyers because I thought they didn't need another forward locked up with that kind of money who's on the wrong side of 33. I didn't like it for Vinny because they're not gonna, they're not contending this year. Obviously, it's not getting better anytime soon. I you know I know he's probably after the money because he already has a cup ring. But I mean between St. Louis, the Bruins, the Red Wings, a lot of very good teams were offering him similar deals. So anyway, but back to the the principal point with the Flyers. If Holmgren's Pulls the trigger on his Drew trade. He should be fired. This reminds me, like, to give Holmgren some credit, this reminds me a lot of the 2006-2007 season with Philly where they kind of had, you know, a mixed bag and island of misfit toys, so to speak, and they, they just struggled from start to finish from uh, wire to wire. And, uh, you know, then Holmgren comes in, makes a, you know, makes a really good move with Forsberg, somehow turns Alexei Shitnik into um, Coburn, which is like, okay. <laughs> Fleece of the Sentinel. Well, that's why the Atlanta Thrashers no longer exist. Not, not that trade, but trades like it. And, um, you know, just then goes out, gets Hartnell, gets some um, teaming in, and then signs Briere on um, on the first day of free agency. And, you know, really had the team in the Eastern Conference Finals a year later. Um, I don't think Holmgren's the guy to do that right now because he, you know, he's a big reason for them, them being in this mess. I, in fairness to Holmgren, you couldn't see Carter and Richards winning the Stanley Cup in Los Angeles the year after getting traded. You couldn't see Bridge Golov struggling to the point where you eat the last seven years of contract. You couldn't see the Chris Pronger injury coming. Um, now on the Shea Weber ish, you know, offer sheet, from what I heard, they were at, they had trade negotiations. Holmgren got impatient and then pulled the offer sheet where it was like putting a gun to someone's head. And you know, um, Nashville said, "All right, matched." You know, it took some struggles, especially with a small market team. But you know, it's moves like that that um, definitely put the Flyers in the situation, and I'm not just piling on Holmgren, but I think it is time for a change. I, Laviolette was really not given the, a full deck to play with, and uh, Ruby's in a similar situation, so I wouldn't blame the coaching staff. A lot of it has to do with management, and uh, you know, not having the foresight to um, solidify the blue line. I mean, that's the great equalizer, and like I said, for the first time in a long time, you can't bash goal, goaltending on a struggling uh, Philadelphia Flyers team. So, Anyway, that's on this episode of the Power Play with CJ on the uh, Philadelphia Flyers' struggles early on and uh, what it means going in the Claude Giroux rumors. Stay tuned for more episodes for the season and beyond. Later, guys.